Welcome to Economic Forum, where we discuss various issues affecting business and the economy. A healthy body and a healthy mind. That is what we are focusing on today. We are going to be talking about men's wellness, because it is common knowledge that when someone is not well, it is very difficult to perform well even at the workplace, and therefore productivity also goes down. So we're going to look at various issues that affect men and how they can be solved in order for productivity to continue growing. And in that regard, we've invited a medical practitioner, Dr. Ozayama Pondela, who works on that topic on well, men's wellness. And uh, he is going to be telling us what it is that uh, bothers men and how they've been trying to solve this uh, at home and at the workplace. Welcome to Economic Forum. Thank you, John. What is it that you call men's wellness? No, thank you so much. So basically, the World Health Organization defines health as a state of physical, mental, social, and spiritual well-being, and not merely the absence of disease. So when we look at men's wealth, health, or men's wellness, we're basically talking about uh, that branch of clinical practice that focuses on men's physical, mental, social, and spiritual well-being. And as you can see, it touches a number of different uh, disciplines within the medical fraternity. So if we talk about mental, we're talking about psychology, psychiatry. We talk about physical, we're dealing with urologists, medical practitioners of different specialties. So it's that branch of clinical practice that emphasizes or has an emphasis on men's well-being, on men's health. Mm -hmm. Let's look at what causes some of these uh, problems that uh, we classify under men's health. Uh, because uh, our focus here is how then they impact on the economy. Because if men are not well, of course we're going to be dealing with the women, youth and so forth, but today we're focusing on men. If they're not well, it affects them in the family and also affects them with regards to their work. And resultantly, if many men are like that, even the economy of the country is affected. All right. Thank you, John. So you find that we used to have a dichotomy with regards to uh, what causes disease uh, between Western countries and, say, African countries or the developing world, uh, where we would say there were diseases of the West, such as heart disease, strokes, cancers, and so on, and then we had diseases in the developing world that were basically infectious diseases. But what we have found is that there's been a nutrition transition whereby many of developing countries are adopting a westernized diet and as a result, we're getting a lot of these non-communicable diseases affecting our populations. So we have a, a, a whole range of illnesses that are now affecting our men. Uh, you know, we have things like heart disease, things like stroke, diabetes, obesity, cancers, and then we've got things that are specific to men, uh, such as men's sexual health, uh, things like prostate cancer, and so on. So you'll find that uh, we are uh, seeing a lot of men who are experiencing a lot of these so-called Western illnesses that are coming uh, uh, to affect our population. Maybe, Doctor, let's look at some of the diseases that you mentioned and uh, how they are unfolding in Zimbabwe. You know, the reality as it is today, uh, there are some of them that you can mention. Just the mental health, for you to be mentally, you know, astute, for you to be mentally aware, it's very important, isn't it? If you are going to work, you are focusing on your work because there's nothing that bothers you. Let's just talk about that before we mention these other diseases. So you'll find with, with regards to mental health, for example, uh, you'll find that uh, diseases like schizophrenia or bipolar disease are comparable between the genders. But you then have things like alcohol abuse. Comparable, uh, <laughs> it's more in which gender. <laughs> okay, so it's basically, it's almost equal. It's basically equal between the genders in terms of bipolar disease and schizophrenia. But then you then have certain uh, mental issues that affect uh, men more prevalently. So things like alcohol abuse, a drug abuse. And it's very interesting to note that in terms of suicides, men are two and a half times more likely uh, to die from suicide than women. So we find that men do have mental health issues that really need to be looked into. Mm -hmm. So when you move from there, uh, I mean, when you get to certain ages, I would mention uh, affected okay. womb, you talk of prostate cancer, uh, you talk of uh, hypertension and other things. Uh, tell us about the prevalence in Zimbabwe. Yeah, so in terms of uh, uh, cancer, especially prostate cancer in men, you'll find that about 20% of all cancers in men are coming from the prostate. 
So it is one of the most common cancers we are experiencing uh, in our population. And it's very interesting that you mentioned that, because a few years ago, our Deputy Minister of Health, uh, uh, Mr. Man Dr. Mangwiru, did highlight the importance of uh, increasing awareness amongst men with regards to prostate health, prostate issues. So it is a very common cancer, and we are looking at uh, increasing awareness amongst our population with regards to this cancer and increasing health-seeking behaviors amongst our men. In fact, uh, just give us uh, more points on what Dr. Mungiro was encouraging men to do because generally uh, men are the last ones to visit a medical practitioner like yourself. They will try other means or try to be strong uh, yes. and yet the situation will be deteriorating. Uh, do you think that men are now taking heed of that and they are now going for regular checkups for some of these diseases and appreciating that as they grow old these diseases have to come their way. So you'll find that, you know, we have, we have stereotypes in our society with regards to the role of men and so on. You know, men being the breadwinners, being the strong, uh, you know, fatherly figure, you know, that paternalistic society that we are raised in. So because of these uh, uh, stereotypes, we find that men don't tend uh, to seek out health support, especially if they have mental illnesses or any other illnesses. So health-seeking behavior has traditionally been very low amongst men. But we do have a, a, a section of uh, of men who are now becoming enlightened to, uh, about the importance of uh, seeking, uh, you know, medical attention, getting regular checkups with regards to not only prostate cancer, but also getting checked for some of these non-communicable diseases I was referring to, like the hypertension, the diabetes, getting checked for your BMI, body mass index, uh, which is an indicator for developing many other illnesses uh, downstream. So we do have a section of men who are now becoming aware that it is critically important for them to be checked regularly. Is this something that has been embraced by many companies or many workplaces so that they also encourage their workers to do that? Yes. So you'll find that there are certain companies that by law are required to have regular checkups for their workers. Some of these are mining companies and so on. So there are regular medical checkups that they're required to have. And those in the food industry are also required to have regular checkups uh, to prevent the transmission of communicable uh, diseases and infectious diseases. But then we do have some of these uh, corporate uh, companies or companies in the corporate world who have now created robust, uh, should I say, uh, a, a robust programs with in their HR departments, uh, whereby they are actually uh, looking at, at the wellness of all their employees, because you are aware that uh, absenteeism and presenteeism, whereby people uh, don't come to work because of a health issue, or they present to work and they're not fully functional, they're not giving their best in terms of productivity. It's a big problem in the world. So you'll find that companies, especially the HR departments, are now creating programs. And as we interact with them, we are usually invited to give health presentations or to do general checks year in and year out. So it is something that is becoming uh, more prevalent. We'll be going uh, into that in more detail. But that's Dr. Uzayama Pondera with our guest on Economic Forum. And we're talking about men's wellness and how it affects the productivity of men. So join us in the second segment. Welcome to the second segment of Economic Forum, where today we are talking about men's wellness. Men's wellness is very important because it also impacts on men's productivity at the workplace and even in homes. Now, our guest is Dr. Wazema Pundira, who is a medical practitioner who specializes in the area of men's wellness. You have been talking about some of the diseases that have to be checked for in advance before they actually occur or before they grow in the later stages. We've talked about prostate cancer, we've talked about even mental illnesses themselves. Let's go on to uh, sexual diseases, you know, because those are the ones that make men fear to visit you as medical practitioners. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, so traditionally, with regards to men's sexual health, uh, the most commonly uh, um, occurring presentation was uh, typically sexually transmitted uh, illnesses and so forth. But now, uh, one thing that's becoming more and more prevalent 
or one thing that we are seeing more and more in our practice is the issue of uh, the men's sexual health with regards to their sexual performance uh, within uh, the bedroom, their intimacy. So you've got issues to do with erectile dysfunction, uh, premature ejaculation, and low libido, which affect men and are serious issues. But because of that uh, perception, those stereotypes we spoke about earlier, that men are meant to be manly, they are meant to, uh, you know, to be, you know, the big macho man. We are finding that men do not typically want to 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 share the burden uh, with regards to this type of illness. But these are some of the issues that commonly affect men, not only physically but also uh, psychologically. And these uh, uh, diseases, those that you mentioned earlier on that have come with the kind of foods that you are eating from the Western world, because in the past those things were known about, and there were also some herbs that were used then, and are still being used today. Uh, what is the position now? Uh, it's quite interesting that uh, many of these issues we spoke about with regards to men's sexual health actually result from some of these non-communicable diseases. So you'll find that men who present, for example, with erectile dysfunction are typically men who have, say, hypertension, diabetes, uh, who have had prostate cancer or had a prostate procedure, and so on. So as an indicator, when men present to us and they're presenting with erectile dys dysfunction, for example, it is usually an indicator that they may, in actual fact, have one of the other non-communicable diseases. And one of the other causes of things like erectile dysfunction are things like psycho your psychology, your, your mental uh, frame of mind. So depression, stress, and so on also cause erectile dysfunction. So as an indicator, it's a very useful tool to help us to begin to investigate these men for other illnesses. Dr. Mabonde, please help men or encourage men uh, to actually visit medical practitioner for this and not to be shy because uh, it would seem that uh, uh, not all are willing to present themselves. Yeah, so you'll find, for example, and I like that you just said that, uh, so you find that the life expectancy for women in Zimbabwe is about uh, 64, and for men it's about 58.1. And this has to do with a lot of things, and one of these things is the health-seeking behavior. Women are more likely to go to a medical practitioner when they are unwell than men. So what we are saying to men is, if you want to catch up with the women, if you want to be a parent with your women, with your wives, you need to visit the health, uh, your healthcare pro uh, providers and get checked on a regular basis, especially when you're above the age of 40, you need to make it a yearly routine. Is this something that uh, is also included in all the programs of the uh, human or uh, personnel management offices? the issue to do with uh, this malfunction that you're talking about? Yeah, so you find that uh, it, traditionally it wasn't really part of the program. Uh, it, was, it, wasn't really, it was traditionally not part of the program with regards to these workplace wellness uh, issues because work, workplace uh, wellness really focused on absenteeism, presenteeism, and uh, basically looked at some of these chronic illnesses like diabetes, hypertension, and so, so forth. But you find that as we interview individuals, uh, we then get to hear some of these stories about these intimacy issues, and this is where we then uh, begin to deal with them. But at a policy level, uh, men's sexual health has not really had that much uh, of emphasis within these programs. How is it dealt with at the workplace? It could be the chief executive and word is moving around in the company that he has such a problem. It could be someone at the shop floor and we have been invited as Dr. Mapondela, you know, a wellness specialist, and you are advising workers on how to deal with these uh, issues or even the workplace, the entire workplace itself, on how to deal with this issue so that there's no stigmatization. Yeah, so stigma is very difficult to deal with. Uh, as we said earlier on, uh, we uh, live for uh, almost millennia, uh, you know, in these paternalistic societies and so on, and it's only during the 20th and 21st centuries where we have had the feminist movement that's, you know, that's come up and, uh, you know, where people are really uh, looking to bring parity between the genders. But because of these issues to do with stereotypes regarding men and men being strong and so on, it's very difficult to do that. One thing that you can do is to have programs that are specifically aligned with sexual health, to get HR managers and those who are dealing with health issues in the workplace to actually target, have targeted programs that deal with men's uh, sexual health and men's health and men's wellness, particularly where men can then have freedom to speak about their issues and ask questions, uh, say, on behalf of their colleagues and so on. On. Yes, I was going to ask about openness. Yes. How does it grow, especially at work here, you know, in the work environment, where your colleagues, you know, are going to be hearing that uh, at home you're a failure, you're not doing well, and so forth, and that becomes public knowledge, and that can be embarrassing. 
and you're there as a, a medical practitioner and advising on wellness, how best can that be done? Yeah, so I think in terms of openness, uh, we're still a long way away from achieving that. I don't, I, for, for, wherever we've gone with this program, we've never really encountered men who are willing to be really open. Often you'll get them saying things like, uh, I'm asking on behalf of a colleague or I'm asking on behalf of a friend. So I, I believe getting to an openness uh, with regards to discussing these issues, we're still a long way away from that. But in the interim, we can get programs designed by our HR managers and so on that are targeted for men. Where men can even have a hotline within the company where they say, look, this is the doctor who deals with men's wellness. We have contracted him to work with you, uh, to work with us as an organization. And if you have any issues to do with these issues, you are free to contact him. So things like that. Or even having a, a, a question box where the doctor, then the company doctor comes in and looks at the questions and makes follow-ups. Yes, I'll stop you there. That's Dr. Zayama Pondera, who is our guest today on Economy Forum. He's talking about men's wellness and we're focusing on how men's wellness impacts the workplace, how it impacts productivity and our economy. The program is Economic Forum and you can get in touch with us on the numbers that are showing on your screen. So join us in the third and final segment. Welcome to the third and final segment of Economic Forum where today we are discussing men's wellness and how it impacts on our economy uh, and also uh, on the business development of the country. And we have as our guest Dr. Uzama Pondera who is a specialist in that area or who is uh, having a keen interest in helping men in different ways. Dr. Pondera is a medical practitioner but uh, who deals with those issues uh, in various ways and even goes uh, to the workplaces uh, to advise uh, and also uh, to talk to men uh, about how they can improve on their health. Let's look at the economic burden you know, of uh, wellness, if you are not well, you know, how you are affected as a family, how you are affected as a company, how you are affected as a country. Okay, that's quite broad. But yes. thank you so much, John. Yes. Uh, so basically when you look at uh, you know, wellness, you need to understand that there are costs that are attached to, to being well. All right. Uh, so there are direct costs and there are indirect costs. So the direct costs would be things like doctor's visitations, the consultation fees. It's not free. Yeah, it's not free. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's no free lunch. Yes. So basically, it's basically things like the direct costs, like your consultations, your procedure fees, uh, and so on. These are and medications that you need to buy and so on. So these are the, the direct costs that we encounter with regards to, to help. And then you've got the indirect costs, which are things that are difficult to really measure accurately, but uh, you can get indicators like lost productivity and so on. And this is manifested in the workplace by those two terms we mentioned earlier, absenteeism and presenteeism. So absenteeism is basically whereby you don't show up to work. So the, your productivity is diminished and your capacity to produce for the organization or for the country is also diminished. We may also have presenteeism, whereby you actually come to work, but you're not well enough to give the maximum or the optimum that you should be given. You should be given. So you'll find that uh, these concepts are quite uh, well known within uh, the, 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 the realms of uh, human resource management. And you know, in countries like the United States, just uh, you know, in terms of cost, just to get a perspective, you'll find that it costs about 150, 150 billion US dollars every year just to manage depression. So there are broad uh, effects uh, to this issue of men's wellness. It, doesn't, it does not only affect the man himself, the individual himself, but it affects his family, and it affects the country uh, at large. Yes. And the other thing that maybe you can say a word about is safety. That uh, if uh, you know, we're talking earlier on about mental health yes. and why and depression that you've just mentioned, that uh, if those are affecting you, that can also be unsafe. You're driving to work and suddenly because you're not concentrating, you're thinking, you can be involved in an accident, or at the workplace, you're in industry, and you're using equipment, and you may not concentrate on that equipment, and it affects you and fellow workers. Say something about that, Dr. Mokoni. Not only that, when an individual is depressed, they are likely to uh, engage in certain behaviors like alcohol abuse, drug abuse, and get in trouble with the law. 
Uh, not only that, you can also, you know, associated with alcohol abuses, things like violence, domestic violence, and so on. So there are a lot of uh, downstream effects uh, to having uh, uh, an individual who's not fully or optimally healthy. Yeah. Yeah. You are talking about uh, alcohol abuse uh, with examples of men who cannot even earn their own salary, maybe it has to be earned by their mothers or their wives or their fathers, because the moment they earn it, can be finished within a day or two uh, at the uh, at the pub before it even gets home. So, so are, are those some of the things that uh, you know you pre address when you're talking about um, uh, drug abuse? Yeah. So that's something that's addressed when we're dealing with drug abuse. And usually, when we deal with drug abuse, it's something that is dealt with in uh, um, you know in the medical fraternity. It's something that's dealt with with our by our psychiatrists and our psychologists because we'll be trying to get. To the, uh, the root cause as to why you are now abusing alcohol, why you are abusing drugs, why you are you know, becoming depressed, why you are exhibiting certain behaviors uh, that are a signal of uh, mental, mental illness. So, uh, you know, this is, these, these issues and their downstream effects are things that we deal with uh, uh, quite a lot in our, in, our, in our practice and when we encounter uh, individuals, but these, I, I must say, uh, are issues which we then refer to our psychiatrists, our psychologists, who can then dig deeper and in some instances they may need to actually prescribe certain drug medications to assist men to get back on track, to get their lives back on track. Yeah. Dr. Mokondela, say something about trust. You're mentioning all these people, people like yourselves, the medical practitioners, you may be talking about priests at church uh, or those of other religions and so forth, or even at the workplace, people in the human resources department trust people don't go to them because they know that by the end of the day their issue will be all over the place uh, what uh, are you saying to those people who are handling such issues in terms of being trustworthy and also confidentiality okay so i like that you mentioned the church uh, because uh, zimbabwe is predominantly a christian nation and the church presents a big opportunity for us to increase awareness amongst men, amongst women, amongst families with regards to these issues. So the church should be that platform that we should really look into and, and investigate and see whether or not we can actually do some of these presentations, some of these programs within the church setting. Now, it is very difficult to control uh, human nature. You know, it, it is in human nature to, to, like, you know, to share issues and problems that you've heard from somewhere else. It's, it's a big issue. But and to take advantage of other people's problems. Yes, certainly, that, that, that's human nature, but it mustn't stop us from doing the work that needs to be done because the greater burden lies with people being unaware of the risks that they face on a day-to-day -day basis. So we need to just take bite the bullet and you know just go forward with this program and hopefully as time uh, progresses, uh, more men will become aware of the importance of these issues and begin to seek uh, you know, their, you know, their medical practitioners and to begin to uh, uh, engage in behaviors uh, that will benefit not only themselves but their families and the economy at large. Dr. Osama Pondera, we'd like to thank you very much for all that advice and that knowledge that you have just uh, shared with our viewers. That's Dr. Osama Pondera, uh, who is a medical practitioner but uh, very much uh, uh, working on men's wellness you know, talk about issues to do with men and how they can be productive at the workplace and also going to the workplace to talk to the employers and to see that employees are also, you know, well informed about wellness right up to the CEO from the shop floor to the CEO because wellness or not being well can affect everyone. So on behalf of our guest on Economic Forum, Dr. Ozama Pondera and the production crew, until next time, please Continue to watch this series even on YouTube. We are on Economic Forum Zimbabwe and also get in touch with us on the numbers that are showing on your screen. This is John Masugu saying goodbye for now. <laughs>